Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Nurul Najiha. I am team leader for Group One. This video will present to you on the RC Plan project that being that is being done for our subject SKMA four two five three for aircraft design two. Before we go any further, I will first introduce to you my team member and the structural organization uh, for this project. As you can see from the chart, there are 12 of us and we are divided into 5 sub group, which is the propulsion and power plant, stability and control, uh, including the avionics, the wing design, and then we have the tail design and fuselage, and last but not least, the pilot team, which will be focusing on flight test, data analysis and piloting. Project of such skills requires proper financial planning in order for us not to underspend or overspend our money. Subsequent to the design process, items needed for the plane fabrication can be identified early on and surveying has been made. Well, as you can see from the table, we require around 687 ringgit or 700 ringgit for this project. Uh, funds are raised through collections of money among the members. Now, let's take a look at aircraft design for Group 1. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Khairul Anwar bin Kerudin, Layas Kerudin. And my job in this group is to design the fuselage and tail of the aircraft. However, the specification and the configuration of aircraft is done by the group fuselage and tail. And my other responsibility is to determine the weight of the aircraft and to determine the position of the electronic part of the aircraft. And my other responsibility also include to determine the center of gravity of the aircraft. As we can see in this slide, this slide show the dimension of our fuselage and as we can observe the dimension of our fuselage is about 1.3 meter. It's quite long for the RC aircraft. However, the MTOW, the maximum takeoff weight is not more than 2 kg. And then we move on to the horizontal tail and then we go to and then we move on to the horizontal tail as you can see the span of horizontal tail is about 0 0.6 meter and the cut of horizontal tail is about 0 0.2 meter the detailed explanation on how they get this dimension will be explained by the group which last and tail and then we go to the vertical tail and here we can see that our vertical tail high is about 0 0.222 meter and then we move on to our conceptual design which is this is our final design of our remote control aircraft and as you can see we are using the fixed wind aircraft with wind span of 1.6 meter and wind cut 0 0.3 meter and we also have three control surface which is aileron elevator and the rudder and the weight of our aircraft for the maximum weight is about 17 no. and then the weight of the and then the maximum takeoff weight of our aircraft is 17.658 newton while the empty weight of our aircraft is 12.753 newton and then we move on to the aircraft specification this aircraft specification as i mentioned before which is the empty wake, the empty OW, wind span, wind call, aspect ratio, and the NACA that we use is 2412. And then we go to our orthographic drawing. And as you can see from the orthographic drawing is the plan view of our aircraft, the side view, and the front view of the aircraft. Other than that, we also can see a detailed dimension of our aircraft from this drawing. From the wind span, fuselage, the height of the aircraft, the distance of the landing gear, and more. And then we go to the position of electronic part. And as we can, as you can see, 
at the left side of the as you can see at the left side of the slide we can see that the 3d view of our aircraft with few slides is being transparent because i want to show all compartment in the aircraft and and the right right side of the slide we can see the cross section of the fuselage of our aircraft and for the electronic part we put brushless motor at the front of aircraft and follow with the ESC and the battery compartment receiver payload under the wing is about 0 0.4 meter from the nose from the from the fuselage from the front of the fuselage and then we go to the servo in this design i install five servo on the aircraft which is two under the wing and three servo at the back of the aircraft the servo under the wing control the aileron uh, with one channel however with one channel but using two servo uh, in order to control to servo by using one channel, I use Y connector and put the servo vice versa. Therefore, when we move the when we move the joystick, the movement of the control surface of the aileron will be vice versa. And for the three servo at the tail, at the left and right of servo, uh, is to control the elevator the elevator and these two servo are also connected with Y connector because we want to control uh, the left and right elevator simultaneously uh, however this uh, however we do not put the position of the servo vice versa because we want to control it at the same time and then the middle servo is used to control the rudder and not just the rudder, we also use the servo to control the tail landing gear in order for us, in order for the in order for the aircraft to maneuver on the ground. As you can see at the right side of the slide, we can see some we can see there are connection between the rudder and the tail landing gear. And then we go to the last part of my presentation, which is the wake and loading of an aircraft. Uh, for your information, most of the component, in, as mentioned, in the table is weighed manually from the propeller, motor, body tail, manager up to wing attachment 2. All the mass are accurate because we weigh manually, as I mentioned before. And to determine the CG of the aircraft, we must first set the datum of the aircraft. And for this aircraft, I set the datum at the mount of the engine, which is at the front of the fuselage, but not the nose. The nose is actually for the brush, brushless motor, but at the front of the fuselage, as I mentioned, at the first light. And the, uh, which mean whatever part that in front of that term will be will be declared as a negative exist negative exist and uh, whatever part at the right side of the and whatever part at the right side of the datum will be declared as a positive value for the x exist and then we will calculate and then we will calculate the movement of the aircraft by assume the data line is to be zero and then we will get the cg position of the empty weight of the aircraft is about 0 0.332 meter as we can see the cg position of the aircraft is about 20% of the MSC mean aerobic cord of the aircraft. And then we go to the maximum take off weight. In this section, we want to determine the center of gravity of the 
maximum take off weight and same with same with the previous empty weight uh, the mass is not changed the only thing that changes is the payload for the M for the MTOW we add payload under the wing which is about 0 0.4 meter from the Dayton line and this will cause the CG position of the aircraft is moved a little bit backward which is 0 0.353 meter and this is about 25% of MAC and this is about 25% of maximum atomic cord of our aircraft and therefore we can see that position of the CG of our aircraft from the empty wick to the MTOW is about 20 to 25 percent of the MAC uh, therefore we can assume that our aircraft is stable because the position of the CG is at the optimum position which is practical for the fixed wing aircraft to fly in the air and that's all from my part Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. Okay, today I will uh, resume our presentation. For my part, I will uh, present about performance and revenue. Okay, uh, for performance, there are five parts. Okay, the first part is uh, the rate of climb on on sea level. As as we can see in the slide, there is the rate of climb of our aircraft on this on the sea level. Uh, so uh, from this graph, we can see that uh, the rate of climb maximum for this aircraft is 27.78 meter per second at velocity 9.94 meter per second okay uh, the next one is uh, the service and absolute ceiling okay service ceiling is uh, the at what altitude this aircraft will have uh, a 0 0.508 meter per second rate, maximum rate of climb while for the absolute ceiling is uh, at what height altitude uh, the aircraft will have uh, 0 meter per second rate of climb okay uh, from the figure we can see that there is the uh, the graph of rate of climb maximum versus altitude so we can see that the absolute ceiling is 33.41 km while the service ceiling is 33.37 km okay uh, the next the next part is uh, for the range okay uh, for this uh, project, we are assuming that uh, the aircraft is uh, will uh, fly at the constant speed, which is uh, twelve meter per second, and uh, we know that uh, the the endurance is five minutes. So by using the four meter range, go to speed time time, uh, we get the range for this aircraft is three point six kilometer. Okay, the next one is uh, take off distance. Okay, uh, from uh, this formula and on the figure we can see that uh, the the tack of distance uh, minimum needed for this aircraft is 6.68 meter so for the landing distance uh, by using the different uh, formula on uh, on the screen we can see we can get the minimum landing distance is 70.655 meter okay the next part is avionics okay avionics are uh, divided into two, two which is a uh, communication signal and uh, component okay a uh, communicational signal is used to control the elevator aileron flap propeller speed rudder and tail landing gear okay uh, for this uh, project we are using a fly sky fs i6 remote control and fs uh, 6rp receiver okay uh, these have six channels 500 meter range with frequency 2.4 gigahertz and for the remote control is using for 1.5 triple a battery okay uh, the next part is the component okay the first one is uh, battery of course so we are using the lipo battery which uh, we are using because it is easy and it is, it is uh, easy to get and it is uh, rechargeable so uh, we have calculate and uh, we we decide to use 3000 mAh with 30 C for this battery. Okay, the next part is uh, the ESC and BSC, which is uh, electronic speed controller and battery elimination circuit. Okay, ESC is used to control and regulate the speed of 
electronic motor while uh, the BSC is used to deliver electronic power to other secretary without the need of multiple battery so uh, basically in this project we are using uh, ESC with BSC combined so uh, we can see that on uh, figure on the left is the is the real life figure of the ESC uh, combined with BSC so uh, and on the right we can see that is the ESC and BSC config configuration so uh, basically ESC will connect to the motor while ESC and BSC both will uh, connect to the receiver and the battery so in this uh, project we're using a 40 ampere ESC so the next part is the uh, the next the next component is the servo okay uh, in the in this uh, project since we have five uh, control surfaces that, that need to be controlled uh, we are using five servos and uh, and we are using each, each servo is using 90 servos as it is light and how oh, it is because it is light but it can it it can withstand the the force to move the control surface okay the next part is push rod servo horn and control horn okay this I will uh, explain how from from a remote control how this servo control the control surface okay first uh, when the remote control give a command uh, it, it will give a uh, information to the uh, receiver and the receiver will will uh, transfer the information to the servo so so and then uh, after receive the information the servo will move the servo on which connected to the push rod will move the push rod which the push rod is connected to the control horn and then uh, we will make the control horn also move and the control horn is uh, connected to the control surface which uh, make the control surface to to move so that's how uh, from the remote control it, uh, it will uh, give command to the receiver make the servo move the control surface so uh, that's that's all the part uh, from uh, part from me that's all thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to our lecturer dr wan zaidi and dr nazri my name is mohammad fidaus bin matab uh, i am from the profession in power planting we'll present to all of you about our motto that we use uh, for our RC aircraft. Okay, based on our analysis and observation, we have choose 2814 at SunSky Moto for our RC aircraft. We choose this uh, type of motor because of its specification that is most suitable for our RC aircraft. With 900 kV and maximum total power that can be achieved by this motor is 570 watt. Okay, for our propeller, we have choose uh, 13 times 6.5 inch propeller because it is recommended based on the motor that we have chosen from the trusted website. For the battery, after we discuss this with our group leader, we have decided to choose three cell battery with 2000 mAh. The next slide is uh, this data sheet that we get from the uh, recommended website. From here, we can calculate the, uh, the maximum takeoff for our SC aircraft, which is 1225 GF, and then for the cruise speed for our RC aircraft is around 875 GF, and for the descent is around 350 GF. Okay, this is uh, the picture of our propeller. Okay, for the endurance, we have uh, calculated the estimation time for the cruisings. Uh, uh, which take around 7.075 minutes and then for the takeoff uh, uh, our SA aircraft took around 6.4 minutes and then for the design is around 8.64 minutes okay that's all for me thank you now let's see the study of power According to Flat Test website, which is a good reference site for RC plane, it is better to choose motto that can produce more thrust than weight of airplane. The velocity given for this project is 20 meter per second. So we need to choose motto that can obtain desired velocity for less than 20 meter per second. 
to choose motor that can obtain desired velocity for less than 20 meter per second by plotting graph power required versus velocity. For the graph power required versus velocity on the screen, the intersection point between power required and power available is the design speed of our aircraft. The power required can be calculated by uh, referring the motor specification obtained from the manufacturer itself. Hence, uh, the maximum velocity obtained uh, from our calculation is 26 meter per second. For your information, we only refer to power available and power required at double its weight data to obtain the design speed for our aircraft. This is because aircraft usually requires more than one drag or one D or theoretical drag uh, plus it will make it more realistic or re reliable to use power required at double of its weight. Now that we have decided the propeller size for this project, which is the 13 times 6.5, we can check the propeller static and dynamic thrust for our aircraft. The equation above is to calculate the thrust generated by propellers. It is a simple approximation from electricaircraftguide.com with a minimum number of inputs. Hence, it uses only the pitch and diameter of the propeller and the RPMs at which prop is spinning to find the thrust. F is static or dynamic thrust in units of newtons. Uh, by the way, it is called static thrust if velocity of V0 is at zero. From the equation, RPM is propeller rotations per minute, pitch is propeller pitch, D is propeller diameter, and V0 is the forward airspeed, free stream velocity or inflow velocity in meter per second. Now let's take a look at the graph. Note that the dynamic thrust is linear based on the equation. This makes sense because although thrust has a square relationship to the induced velocity of the propeller, it has only a linear relationship to the speed of the plane. Assalamualaikum and very good day to all of you. Today my name is Muhammad Akmal Ashraf and I will be presenting about the wing design. So our group uh, of wing design consists of three members. There is uh, myself, uh, Zulmatin and also Azril. So three of us have been working on the wing throughout the semester from the beginning. And uh, both of them will be presenting after this. So before we design our wing we have to know the location of the wing that we want to locate that is uh, the wing configuration there are many types of wing configuration that we can see from the slide uh, such, as, such as low wing in inverted wing the hydro wing and header wing and so on so from the choices that we have we are considering to use the high wing as our choice of preference and uh, of course this type of wing this different type of wing configuration have different uh, uses and different uh, can be used on different uh, conditions and what are the pros and cons of using the high wing so the green box uh, indicates the pros and the red box indicates the cons uh, that are the disadvantages and the pros is that the high wing is very stable at low speed uh, in our case uh, the RC is moving uh, from a speed range of uh, 10 to 25 meter per second so it is considered as a very low speed and we think that the high wing is a good choice or su suitable choice for our users and it also increases the roll stability as the CG is located below the wing and the cons is that or the disadvantages is that the wing or aircraft will experience higher drag during the landing flare. Landing flare is a situation that when the aircraft want to land, the nose of the aircraft or RC will pitch up and the tail will pitch down. So it is called a landing flare. And of course, it will facing an increase in profile drag and also the interference drags. This is the consequences of using the uh, high wing. And of course, when we have the wing configuration, we have to consider the wing shape. 
uh, this is the sum of the wing shape uh, have been uh, shown by flight test at their website and uh, there are many types of wings and the user's application is of course the difference for every type of shapes and we are considering to use the rectangular straight wing as uh, been highlighted in the blue box and why we are using rectangular wing this is because uh, it is very less expensive and easier to go uh, as you can see the rectangular wing uh, is just a long rectangle uh, shape without any hole or any uh, complicated or complex uh, design and furthermore it is easier to design with less aeronautical expertise required to achieve good handling meaning that uh, we as uh, uh, aeronautical students uh, can also build uh, the wing uh, ourselves uh, without uh, to get any uh, certificate uh, or qualification to design the RC uh, wing, rectangular RC wing and then uh, we will go to the spe specific model criteria of our wing and uh, as I have been mentioned before the wing that we are using uh, wing position that we will be using is a high high wing and of course uh, the, the wing shape is a rectangle and having a wingspan of 1.6 meter uh, cord length of uh, 0 0.056 uh, aspect ratio of 5.3 we get uh, by uh, using the value of wingspan also wing cord and the wing area the whole wing area of the wing is 0 0.48 meter square and we are now using a dihedral angle uh, as you can see from the slide the the header angle is none and uh, we are using wing tip in our model so the tip design is a uh, end plate uh, NACA is 2412 the material for the wing is a PPA foam uh, having a thickness 0 0.005 meter so this is uh, basically the general the uh, overall uh, criteria or specification for our wing so we'll go to the wing design with our aileron this is uh, we are modeling the design using a solidworks application software and uh, this is the result when we render it without aileron and the right hand side of the slide show uh, the table show the specification of the wing design itself and this is the drawing of the wing without aileron uh, we can see the side view top view front view and also isometric view uh, with a uh, dimension specific dimension we can see it very clearly so uh, in the early of uh, presentation I have mentioned about the aileron so what is the use of aileron the use of aileron is to generate the rolling motion of the RC itself besides the aileron also can uh, it helps to bang the RC so uh, how it work we have to know how the aileron works aileron works uh, when uh, by uh, if the right hand side of the aileron if move uh, uh, upwards uh, the left hand side will move uh, downwards so this both aileron for the left side and uh, and the right side is moving in opposite direction so it, that it, it will uh, works effectively and the aileron also uh, work by changing the effective shapes of the airfoil of the outer portion of the wing so this is the mechanisms of uh, the aileron that we are using to roll our RC uh, if there is no aileron the uh, our RC cannot roll and cannot make a turn Okay, so uh, this is the uh, theory that we use to design our aileron uh, from Bremer in his book he stated that uh, to design the length of, uh, of the wing we are using a 15 to 25 percent and uh, for the wing for the area of the aileron we are taking a 10 to 12 percent of the wing area so as we know the cut length of the wing the whole wing is 0 
and the wing area is 0 0.48 meter square so uh, according to the theory by Reimer uh, 15 to 20 percent length of the cord and 10 to 12 percent from the wing area we are taking the uh, the mid the mid value for both of the value so from the 15 to 25 percent we are taking 20 percent that is the mid between 15 to 25 and also the 10 to 12 we are taking the mid that is 11 percent from the value uh, 20 percent and also the 11 percent we can uh, generate with our uh, aileron dimensions that we have that we got from the calculation that is uh, the height we get is uh, about 8.81 millimeter and also the cord length for the aileron itself is a uh, 55.6 millimeter so from this we design the aileron using a uh, solid work also like the wing and this is the geometry of the aileron and the specification in the table and this is, in, is this is in the uh, drawing of the aileron so this is a this is a detailed drawing you can see and of course uh, in our wing we are using spars this is to uh, strengthen and make the wing more stiffer because uh, we don't want the wing to break or to uh, experience a damage uh, during flying in the air so the spar sizing that we use uh, is uh, 60 times 10 times 10 cm and the uh, uh, thickness of the foam is 0 0.05 centimeter so basically this is the uh, component for the wing and uh, we also uh, generate the drawing of the wing spa in solid work uh, basically we just uh, draw back the spa from the real uh, wood the metal that we are using for the spa is uh, just a general wood normal wood and that is the dimension of the spa this is the drawing of the spa so I will just uh, go quick and then of course to move the aileron we have to use servos in this case we are using two servos uh, to move the aileron so from the transmitter it will uh, put uh, will, it will uh, the servo will gain input and will move the uh, aileron so uh, the servos is connected with a rod or cable to the uh, aileron to move it uh, up and down uh, so that uh, the aircraft can bang uh, this is uh, from the slide the right hand side of the slide showing the uh, uh, bottom view so we can see the uh, air wing from bottom we can see there is a two hole at the left and the right hand side uh, both hole uh, indicates that the locations of the servo so this is the locations uh, in the circle left side and hand side right hand side and left hand side and yes this is there are wing tips using in our design so we are using the end plate type there are many uh, wing tip type such as a rounded sharp uh, cut off forward swap and so on so we are considering the end plate type because uh, it is more uh, friendly is more convenient for us uh, uh, to design to create rather than other design so this is our wing assembly uh, from all of the components that have been mentioned before the wing spar, the, the aileron the servos uh, and, and many more so this is our component of this is our assembly and uh, some of the component of the wing is uh, we are using one spa uh, two aileron left hand uh, left hand right and uh, the wing tip also left and right so we are using the rod the rod is to fix the aileron uh, so that it didn't move uh, out from the wing so it just move uh, in, in the in the axis and we are using two servos for the aileron so this is our exploded view so we can see uh, number four is the rod the rod is the one that fix the aileron as I have mentioned the 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 rod 
uh, makes that the aileron uh, can rotate only at its axis. So this is our flight envelope. We are plotting, we are referring uh, Gilles Day uh, to plot our uh, VN diagram. So in this case, the uh, load factor, the positive load factor is 3 and also the negative load factor is uh, negative 1.5. From this load, two load factor, we we can plot our uh, our flight envelope for our RC. So we can see that there, there are uh, diving speed, cruising speed, stalling speed, uh, cornering speed in, in the flight envelope. So the diving speed is about uh, 21 meter per second. If the uh, is if our RC exceed the limit, the RC will stall, or the RC will just have to uh, playing around in just the envelope. If it goes out of the envelope, it will stall. So this is uh, that's all for my, nah, that's all for my presentation today. Uh, thank you very much. I will pass to my friends. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zulmatini Ahmad Chukri. So today, I'm going to conduct the wing analysis for our RC factor. This analysis is divided into two parts, which is the wing analysis without the aileron and also the wing analysis with the aileron. Both of these analyses are conducted into two types of light conditions, namely 3G load factor and also negative 1.5G load factor. In order for us to conduct this analysis, we must we must first must determine the weight of our RC pattern. Okay, so the first is the fuse slash weight. As you can see, there are multiple items inside our fuse slash, namely the propeller, the motor, the landing gears, battery, and so on. And these types of items have its own specific mass. And when we add up all of this mass, we obtain a value of one thousand. 2, 2, 3, you can, uh, gram, I'm sorry. And we divide times it by safety factor of 1.2 and we obtain a value of 1.467 kilogram. And we convert this value of kilograms into newton by multiplying by a value of 9.81 meter per second. Meter per second square, we obtain a value of 14.397 newton for the two slash weight. The next one is the wing weight, okay. We estimated that the wing weight of our RC plane is 300 grams, which includes all the components inside the wing, of, like the servo and the spa and so on. We times it by safety factor of 1.2 and we obtain a value of 360 grams. Okay, convert it to Newton and we divide it by 2 because we are conducting this analysis only for the semi span weight. Okay, okay. so the, we add up. Uh, both of this weight for the total estimation from the wind to slash, we obtain a value of 17.928 newton. Okay, this value must be divided by the span of our half RC plane, which is 0.8, and multiply by its specific flight condition. And for the 3G load factor, we multiply it by 3, and for the negative uh, 1.5G load factor, we multiply it by negative 1.5. And we obtain a value of 33.616 newton meter per cubic kilometer, factor, and also negative one point uh, negative 16.808 newton per meter for the negative 1.5 kilometer. factor. Okay. For the wing weight, we doesn't need to multiply it by a factor, but we must divide it by the span of the wing, which is 0.8. We obtain a value of 2.207 newton meter. For the half to slash weight distribution, we divide it by 0 0.045 meter because this is the distance of half of our to slash. We obtain a value of 159.9684 newton meter. As you can see, this the load distribution uh, for the to slash is the highest because all of our components are located inside the to slash and is the part where it is the heaviest. Okay. In order to conduct analysis, we must obtain the free body diagram. So, for the 3G load factor, the free body diagram consists of three types of load distribution, the namely, namely the weight distribution due to the 3 load factor, which is the in the green color, the fuse slash, 
large weight distribution, uh, which is the green color. The first one is in the blue color, I'm sorry. And the last one is in leaf distribution in the red color. The direction for the distribution is upwards, while the direction for the fuselage and the weight distribution is downwards. Okay. From there, we can conduct the shear force diagram in the bending moment diagram. So, the shear force diagram for a tree load factor will obtain a value of 32.33 newton in the middle part of our acid pen. And the same goes for the bending moment diagram. We obtain a maximum value of negative 10.21 newton at the middle part of the RCF pen. Okay. The next one, we continue with a negative 1.5 load factor. Same goes for the agita type distribution. The value changes only for the weight distribution, while the direction changes for all of it. Okay, the weight distribution and the fuselage distribution. Before this, we directed it downwards. Now we direct it upwards. But the lift distribution, we directed it downwards. This is because we assume that the aircraft are flying upside down when it experiences a negative one point five g load factor. Okay, and from there we come back to shift the shape of the aircraft and the maximum value of negative eighteen point eighty eight newton. Same goes for the bending moment diagram and value of 4.83 Nm at the middle part of the RCF pen. Okay. As you can see, the maximum value usually occurs at the middle part of our RCF pen. And with that, we must ensure that the middle part of our RCF pen is strong enough and is, have higher strength in order for us to prevent any failure or catastrophic to have curl the RCF pen is flying in the sky. Right. So, we continue with the wind analysis with the aileron. Before this, my colleague Akmal Ashraf has explained the specification and the measurement of our ailerons, and with that, I will only explain the analysis here for my part. Okay, the aileron, in order for us to find the lift distribution of the aileron, we, we use the general formula of half rho v square SCL. Okay, the rho is 1.225, which is the value of the density at the atmospheric level, three level. The velocity is the 7, which is the cruising speed. The area is the area of our aileron, and also the coefficient lift is we obtain from NACA for our aeropoil and at the angle of 10 to 8 degree, which is the general formula for the cruising speed, uh, cruising angle, and we obtain a value of 0 0.5899. And we multiply all of this value and we obtain a value of 0 0.433 meter. With that value, we multiply, we divide it by the span of our aileron, which is 0.44 meter. We obtain a value of 0.984 newton meter, which is the lift distribution for our aileron. And then we conduct the 3G analysis and also negative 1.5G analysis. And as you can see, the free body diagram, we add, a, 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 we add an extra lift, which is 0.984 newton per meter, which is the load distribution due to the aileron. Which can be seen in the orange color, and from which is directed upwards. And from there, we can conduct the shear force diagram in a bending moment diagram. As you can see here, the value is 32.14 newton, which is also same which located in the middle of the ice plane, and also same for the bending moment diagram. The value is 10.11 newton meter, and same goes to the negative 1.5 g analysis. Okay, the value. It's the same with this before, but we change the direction because we assume that the RCF pen is flying upside down at the, in the atmosphere. And we construct the shear force diagram uh, and we obtain a value of 18.69 Newton at the middle of our RCF pen. And also, the same goes for the bending moment with a value of 4.74 at the highest at the middle part of our RCF pen. Okay. So if we compare the presence between the aileron without the ailerons with different load factor, for example, load factor of three, we can observe that without the ailerons, the, the shear force is 32.33, while with aileron, the shear force decreases slightly to 32.14. Here we can see that the effect of the presence of the aileron, which is reduces the forces onto our wing. And, but, However, the bending moment increases slightly without aileron, the value is 10.11, and with aileron, the value is 10.21, which means that when the presence of aileron, is, it decreases the shear force, but it increases the bending moment. In general, the bending moment can 
be reduced by using a stiffer material which can counteract the bending moment of the RCF then due to the distribution. So with that, I end my presentation and we can move on to the next section. Thank you so much. That's all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning or good evening, I suppose. Hi, my name is Azril and I am in charge of the wing for this aircraft design 2 subject for the remote control aircraft project. For this project, I am in charge of wing. As a person in charge of wing, it is my responsibility to present to you about the wing loading of our remote control aircraft for the for the remote for the RC airplane of group 1. So basically, what is wing loading? Wing loading is a measurement or indicator to see how much or uh, how how much of weight or load that can be taken by our aircraft there are few importance for this uh, wing loading one of it is to calculate the stall speed of an aircraft if we have a wing loading analysis we can calculate the stall speed of our aircraft uh, as the same for our remote control aircraft the second the second important of wing loading is that we can calculate or determine the landing the landing or takeoff length if we have a, if we have an aircraft with a higher wing loading it needs a longer longer runway to take off and a longer runway to land so how do we do wing loading well the steps are quite simple first things first you need to divide your wing into few sections you can divide into how many sections do you want as long as as long as you are satisfied and one thing to be sure the more the more you divide your wing section the accurate the wing loading is from the division of these wings we can use the shrank method or shrank appointed formula the designated formula to calculate the wing the wing loading after we calculate into few aspects and then and then we plot a graph to see the effect of the wing loading against the distance so the next slide that i am going to show is is about the is about the aspect of wing loading according to shrank's method so this is the graph of the shrank method this is the first graph which is the graph of local leaf coefficient versus the distance which is in the graph that we can see here it is plotted cl on the y axis and y on the x axis which is y is the distance from the root cord so the graph that we are interested is in the is the is in the orange is the orange line which is the local leaf coefficient as we can see at a zero meter or at the root cord, the CL or the leaf coefficient is the highest. And as we go further, move further away from the root cord, at the tip, the leaf coefficient is zero. Basically, the leaf when the leaf coefficient is zero, that means the leaf is zero. And this is logic as there is almost no leaf at at the tip of an aircraft. And for our project, as we can see from the graph, the CL of our aircraft at the root cord is around one around 1.11 or 1.12 at the root cord. And as we go at the tip it is zero because there is almost no leaf that is generated at the root at the tip of the wing. This graph also indicates that as the <coughs> As we move away from the root cord of the aircraft, the leaf keeps decreasing until it reaches the tip of the aircraft. Alright, now moving on to the second graph of this shrank method, which is the graph of wing load distribution coefficient, CCL versus the distance from the root cord, Y. When we look at the graph, the, the line that we are interested in what the line that we are interested in is actually the blue line which is the wing load distribution 
coefficient, the CCL. And if you can see the line or the pattern of the blue line is just the same as the line, uh, the graph before, which is the graph of CL versus Y. As it moves further away from the root chord, the wing, the CCL decreases or the wing load distribution coefficient decreases. Just like the previous reason, the reason why the reason why the CCL at the tip is zero because there is no leaf generated at the tip. So that is why the CCL at the tip is zero. And if you go at the uh, at the root chord, which is approximately zero point, the CCL is approximately zero point three five, which is the highest of wind load distribution. Now I'm going to show you the combination of ellipse leaf coefficient CY, the wing load distribution coefficient CCL, which is we just discussed just now, and the plan view half wing versus all these three versus the distance from the root chord. The first line that I'm going to explain is actually the green line, which is the trapezoidal platform. In this trapezoidal platform, it is assumed that the wing loading is constant all throughout. The wing from the root of the chord until at the tip of the chord, except that at the tip of the chord, it is it said that there are no leaf generated at the tip of the chord. The second graph that I want to explain is actually the red line, which is the elliptical planform graph. This is the graph that assumes that the wing loading that acts on the wing of the aircraft that generates the leaf is in the el ellipse shape. Hence, how we produce the graph. And the, lastly, the blue line, which is the strength approximation method, which complies and compromise both of the graph. And that is the reason why we get at the middle. And that is the reason why the strength method is at the middle. So to compromise the elliptical platform and the trapezoidal platform. Okay. For, so for those three previous graphs, is all talking about the wing loading the X on the wing of an aircraft. For now, we are going to talk about the forces that act on the on the wing of the aircraft. So the first force that we are going to talk is a, is the shear force. And in this graph, we can see that the shear force is highest at the at the root of the wing compared to the competitive tip of the wing where the shear force is almost zero newton. If you look at a solid of mechanics theory, the shear force is always happen at the middle. So since the root cord is the middle of the wing, hence that is the reason why it experienced the highest shear force. So the next force that uh, we are going to talk is about the bending moment. So for this, we plot a graph of bending moment against the distance one more time. And the distance that we can see is that the distance from the root, from the root chord uh, to the tip chord. This bending moment graph shows the exactly same, same pattern just like the shear force. We can see that the highest bending moment occur at the root chord of the wing compared to almost zero newton meter of bending moment occur at the tip of the wing. For bending, if the location is far away from the force that acts on something, it experiences the highest bending moment. For the aircraft of the wing, of the, wing the highest force is actually acts on the tip of the wing. Since the root of the wing is very far away from the tip of the wing, hence it generates the highest bending moment. So the last graph for this strength approximation method is the graph of local lifting force against distance. If we can see at the shape of or the pattern of the graph for this local lifting force against the distance, we noticeably find out that it is the same pattern as the first three graphs. Which is which is the local lifting force is high at the root chord of the wing compared to almost zero at the tip of the wing where we know that no force or lift is generated at the tip of the wing.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good day. My name is Muhammad Raiz bin Ramli and today I'm going to present tail and fuselage parts. So first of all, an aircraft is generally made up of several vital parts which are fuselage, wing, landing gear and the stabilizers. But for today's presentation, I will cover the design concept of the fuselage and stabilizers only. For this fuselage design concept, our team have adopted monocot structural concept. So quick refresh about the monocot structure. So basically monocot structure is a structural technique in which stresses are reacted by a thin membrane or a shell of a material rather than a collection of beam. Why we opted uh, for this structural technique is because of uh, this structure is stiff in bending and like and therefore uh, ideal for weight sensitive vehicles such as uh, airplane. The material that we used uh, to make the entire fuselage is expanded polypropylene or EPP foam since it has a relatively good strength to weight ratio. As you can see in this slide, our fuselage length is 1.32 meter width of fuselage is 9 cm and the fuselage height is 11 cm. So how we determine the fuselage length? Based on flighttest.com, a renowned consultation website for RC airplane build, they said that the length of fuselage is 75% of the wingspan, which is equivalent of 1.3 meter out of our wingspan. So based on this premise, we decided to design our RC airplanes to have a length of 1.32 meter. So what's inside our face latch? So basically, inside our face latch, there are four things which comprise of battery, ESC, two wings attachment, and payload. For detailed design concept, the sizing of the stabilizers are calculated based on the tail volume ratio. As you can see in the table, our type of aircraft is general aviation single engine, which has typical value coefficient of 0.7 and 0.04 for horizontal and vertical stabilizers respectively. These values were calculated based on these formulas from these formulas, we can calculate the size of our aircraft stabilizer based on the parameters that we have. Applying these parameters into the formulas, we got 0.11635 meters square for horizontal stabilizers area. From this value, we designed the horizontal stabilizer with the dimensions that can suit with this area value. Same calculation principle also apply for the vertical stabilizer. From the calculation, we got 0.0075 meter square of vertical stabilizers area. From this value, we designed the vertical tail with the dimension that can suit with the calculated area. Note that the orange mark is actually the vertical tail area. The rest are part of the fuselage. For the effective sizing control surface, tail control surface ratio was used. Based on our type of aircraft, the ratio between control surface cord and the stabilizers cord are 0.45 and 0.44 elevator and rider respectively. And based on the calculation using the tail control surface ratio formula, for elevator cord, the dimension is 9 cm. But using tail control surface ratio formula will only give the dimension of uh, the control surface cord only, but not the length. So we refer to the flighttest.com and according to the website uh, for elevator, the area is actually 20% of the horizontal stabilizers area, which is equivalent to uh, 0 0.26 meter if we divide the elevator cord with the 20% of the horizontal stabilizers area. This is the dimension of our elevator. Note that the 0.26% is actually total length of elevator. And this we need to divide by two since we have two elevator. 
same calculation principle also applied for the rudder cord uh, calculation. The calculated rudder cord is 3 cm. And also refer to the flighttest.com to determine the length of the rudder. So this is the dimension of our rudder. Note that we made a slightly modification to our rudder. Instead of 0.1 meter length, we change it to 0.2 meter length due to a reason that if we follow the advice of the website, the size of the rudder that we got based on our logical thinking cannot provide good yawing control which can affect the maneuverability of the aircraft. So that's all from me. Let's move on to the fuselage and wing attachment analysis that will be presented by Afika. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. My name is Nur Afika Bete Jamrus. Uh, okay, I will present about wing fuselage attachment. Basically, I will explain more uh, about um, wing fuselage at uh, attachment uh, for the analysis. Okay, this is a uh, wing fuselage attachment location uh, inside the fuselage. So, as you can see, it, we can see that. Okay, uh, this is a drawing for a studied view of wing fuselage attachment. Uh, item number one is attachment block. Number two is popsicle. And number three is screw. Okay, this is um, analysis for attachment block. From the analysis for this attachment, for upper part, we can see that uh, stress are more at each area and at the hole that connect with screw. For the side part, the stress is more at the middle, which attach uh, with full slash. Other than that, the bottom part is also also attached with full slash. We can see the most stress applied are at the middle and at the right and left edges. Okay, now let's move uh, to analysis for popsicle. From the analysis for popsicle for upper part, we can see that there is more stress at the holes which are attached with screw. Critical stress happen in the hole with red color since it is having smaller surface area. From side, we can also see the green area has the largest stress. Green area is at the hole where it is attached with the screw. Okay. Uh, in analyzing structural integrity, the basic thing that we have to do is to calculate shear force and bending moment diagram. This will give designer an overview of the result of the combination of different force and their likely implication on the structure and its stability and likely um, constructional uh, constraint which should be taken care of while designing. Okay, the, the left figure is a shear and bending moment diagram at load factor n equals to 1. The right figure is a shear and bending moment diagram at load factor n equals to 3. N equals to 3. Okay, in analyzing uh, structural integrity, the basic thing that we have to do is to calculate um, shear force and bending moment diagram. This will give designer an overview to uh, for the result okay step by lead. okay in analyzing uh, structural integrity the basic thing that we have to do is to calculate shear force and bending moment diagram this uh, will give designer an overview of the result of the combination of different force and their likely implications on the structure and its stability and likely stru constructional constraint we should be taken care of while designing so the left one the left figure is a shoot and bending moment diagram at load factor n equal to one the uh, for the right diagram is a shoot and bending moment diagram at load factor n equal to three okay this uh this is a uh, left one a shoot and bending moment diagram at load factor n equal to negative uh, 1.5 so uh, the, um, the table uh, shown um, is a material selection we use uh, for our um, um, analysis of foam. Okay, the density is at thirty nine point nine kg per meter cube. The young modulus is three point eight seven MPa. Poison ratio is uh, zero point two eight five. Tensile real strength is two hundred kPa. Tensile ultimate strength is a 600 kPa. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, this, uh, the left one is a shear and bending moment diagram at load factor and uh, equals to negative uh, 1.5. So basically, uh, we make a uh, truly shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay. Uh, table shows is a material selection for uh, our analysis. Okay. Density of our foam is um, 39.9 kg per meter cube. In the young modulus is 3.87 MPa. The poison ratio is 0.285. The tensile yield strength is 200 kPa. And the tensile ultimate strength is 600 kPa. Okay, this is a position of force across the fuselage. Okay, for the battery is a 0.2 meter. Wing fuselage attachment is 0.33 meter. Main landing gear is 0.35 meter. Mm, wing and servo is um, zero at uh, 0.43 meter. Payload at, at 0.44 meter. Wing fuselage attachment uh, is at uh, 0.52 meter. For tail servo is a uh, 0.79 meter. Uh, for vertical and horizontal tail is at a uh, 1.3 meter uh, for the landing uh, is at uh, 1.32 meter. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nomai Sara and I'm going to briefly explain to you about our fuselage dynamic conditions. First, let's start off with the dynamic condition for 1.5 G. So, this is our shear force and bending moment diagram. For shear force, it started off with 0.15 newton and end with 1 newton with maximum load of 9.66 newton. And as for bending moment, it start off with 4.5 newton and end with 9.59 newton maximum with maximum load of 1029. Next, moving to a dynamic condition for 3G, for shear force diagram, started with negative 0.29 newton and end with 20.47. It has a maximum load of 35 newton and for bending moment diagram starting with negative 8.8 .8 newton and ending with maximum load of ne negative 18,000 newton okay as you can see here this is a front part of a fuselage analysis this analysis was done in load factor uh, n equal to 1 using the material as i mentioned before with machine style in the fork set for the front section of the fuselage the highest estimate stress is 37 kPa, which is located at the both upper edges of the back part since as you can see in figure shown. The place where the highest stress spot is where the fuselage is no longer in closed section configuration. These stress are contributed by the loads of a motor, propeller and battery. Okay, this is uh, the middle part of fuselage. This analysis also was done in load factor n equal to 1 using material as I mentioned before with machine style in default set. For the middle part, uh, the highest estimate stress is 107 kPa which is located at the main landing gear position. This is the highest uh, estimate uh, the highest stress estimate compared to other stress estimate across the fuselage part. This is actually matched with the graph of shear force and bending moment diagram. Where according to that, the highest shear force and bending moment are occurred. Okay, this is uh, the back part of uh, fuselage. This is a uh, figure shows uh, the analysis that we have done. This analysis was done also in root factor n equal to 1 uh, with material that I mentioned before. Um, with um, Meshing style in default style. For the back section of the fuselage, overall there is no significant stress except at the upper or both edges in front part. The reason is same as I mentioned uh, in front part section. The highest stress uh, estimate in the is 13.4 kPa. So the weakness um, during uh, we make the analysis is uh, the clip or clip or coffee part or trade it. Uh, and complicated part uh, cannot be matched uh, such as um, screw so uh, when it, it cannot be matched um, we can make the analysis okay so that's all for me uh, I will pass to my friends to present uh, other topic thank you hi so next I'm gonna proceed with the main landing gear for our radio control aircraft, we choose tailway configurations due to its position much further from the center of gravity. 
If a tailwind fails on landing, the damage to the aircraft will be minimized. So this is our exploded view of the main landing gear assembly. Number three is the screw. Number four is the wheel. Number five is a tire. Number six is the bracket, which connecting all of these things. And number seven is the hex nut. Next is, this is our uh, SOLIDWORK uh, 3D models of our main landing gear. The SOLIDWORK models is exported to Abacus with the aid of SOLIDWORK to Abacus plugging tools. However, a precaution is to ensure the consistency in the unit system. Throughout the simulation, we will adopt the international system of unit SI unit system. Next is the properties of the main landing gear. Selecting a material requires a lot of investigation in their physical properties. For example, strength, ductility, corrosion resistance. And based on the findings, the main landing gear is made of stainless steel. So the density is the 8,100 kilogram per meter cube. The Young Mondelez is 190 GPA, the poison ratio is 0 0.27, and the yield strength is the 207 MPA. And uh, in structure analysis, boundary conditions are applied to those regions of the models where the displacement and or rotations are known. Such region may be constrained to remain fixed or have zero displacement and or rotations during the simulation or may have specified non-zero displacement and or no rotations. So the pink part is the loading condition and the blue and yet, uh, orange part is the boundary condition selected for this main landing gear. And as for the meshes, a mesh is a physical discretization of a domain existing in one, two or three dimension. Higher quality mesh is a synonymous with smaller mesh. It can often be achieved with careful partitionings and edge seed. So this is the measures I've done for this uh, main landing gear. And next is the von Mises stress for the main landing gear. The colored and contoured von Mises stress result helps to identify where is the most critical part and which part might require strength enhancement. The stress result indicate that maximum mag magnitude is located at the holes which will be attached to the tires. This part. And in order to further improve the structural, its diameter needs to be made thicker. Other than that, the green are also shown as the highest stress. So this is the Vormis' stress for the main landing gear. Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Ivan Michael. So we're from group number one. So today I'm going to present about manufacturing process for our RC plan. So the manufacturing process is divided into three parts, which is our tail, wing, and fuse sludge. So let's proceed to the first one, which is the fuse sludge. So the fuse sludge, we are using board form, which is quite simple, because we need to achieve the light weight. So we first one, we need to do the cutting process by using cutter. Then we going to glue it using hot glue gun. And then as you can see in the three main picture, top, front, and the side view of our fuse sludge. So I'm going to proceed to the next one, which is the tail. Is it the same process with the fuse sludge since we are using the same uh, material, which is foam board? So we're going to cut glue. And then as you can see in the slide, where our dimension, how we would cut our tail and then after that we will go for the sanding process use sandpaper to smoothen the surface the next thing is also the same the repeated process cutting gluing then you can see from the slide our wing span of the wing then we're going to go for the sanding process to smoothen any rough surface Next, I will be talking for our costing for group number one, total costing. So our total costing is approximate 687 ringgit. It almost exceed to 700 ringgit with a total of 11 items. So the most expensive one is, as you can see in the slide, it's the remote control, which is 160 ringgit. And then followed by foam board which we bought in six quantity. So the rest is average pricing. 
So this is the pilot part in this project. So I'm the first pilot for our group number one. So this is related to flight testing and preparation. So before me as a pilot, I need to fly an RC plane. I need to make a planning and also checklist before we can try our plan, whether is it suitable to fly or not with the specific checklist that I already made. So let's proceed the next slide. So this is the activity that I decided to conduct during our uh, first flight test. So the first thing first is I need to record the meteorological condition on site, which is the weather, what happened during that day. Is it raining, stormy, sunny? And then the next one is I need to ensure that the pre-flight RC plan checklist has already checked. After this, I'm going to show the checklist that I already made. So the, the third one is the basic thing that I will be tested to make sure that our RC plan is suitable to be fly, to be, I mean, to be used or to be fl fly by any pilot. So we need, so I'm going to test the four basic flight maneuver, which is straight and level flight. And then the ability for the aircraft to turn, uh, climb, and descend. So the, the fourth one is the testing form. I'm going to use a testing form since I need to know how much the aircraft needed to be tested before it can fly properly or correctly with a safety measure. So I'm going to use a testing form that I'm going to record this parameter. So the first thing I'm going to write is the aircraft name. So the purpose test and requirement to be met. Uh, draw the flight expected path, operating altitude, and uh, maximum takeoff weight, trial number, ambient speed, ambient temperature on that day, the wind direction, and battery volt in each, each cell, and battery voltage of the transmitter so here i'm gonna show you the testing form that i already made instead of i list down one of this parameter it's quite confusing so i'm gonna so i'm already made a testing form so all the important parameter will be or uh, will be in organized or will you can say you can understand what i'm trying to do with the testing form so this is the testing form that I already made. It's uh, I put in a table form and then the lower part I put the expecting flight path. So that's the empty blank space. We, you can write the direction of the aircraft, however you want to flow it. And then the comment by the pilot. The next thing is uh, the checklist that I need to do for the flight preparation before the RC plane can take off. So the pre-flight checklist is actually a task that should be performed by pilot, me as the first pilot for our group number one, and then a crew prior to take off. So the reason for this is to improve the flight safety so that no important tasks are forgotten. Like for example, I need to do a control surface checklist, ensure that no foreign object attached to the control surface that can affect the lift of the aircraft. So failure to correctly conduct a pre-flight checklist using a checklist is a major contributing factor to flight accident. As I was mentioned earlier, if we don't have the checklist, then we just try start and then take off with our aircraft, it might be unsafe or might be something for an object attached on the control surface, for example, then can make our RC plane lose control. So for our RC plane pre-flight checklist, it consists of control surface checklist, 
the electronic and the sensor calibration checklist. So this is the checklist that I already made. This is the pre-electric RC plan free pre-flight checklist. As you can see, it's a two-page uh, checklist that needed to be that needed to be completed or you need to recheck before you can fly the RC plane. So you can I can uh, I divided into exterior and interior of the RC plane. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Fiti Asrin bin Muhammad Asif from group 2 of our aircraft design class. So today I would like to discuss what is the flight testing and flight procedure. We go to flight testing first. Alright, uh, as everybody know, flight testing is the final process in designing aircraft process. Which is to, we can justify uh, either our uh, design aircraft are safe to fly or not in this process. Uh, the second reason why we need to do a flight test because we can approve that our theoretical data analysis that has been calculated if during a design process uh, can be accepted or not. Uh, first of all, to proceed this process which is a flight test, uh, me and Joshua has been discussed uh, to plot the flight path for this testing. The reason why we need to sketch this flight path first because we want to avoid what's next question comes up from the pilot so that the pilot can fly the aircraft perfectly and smoothly. Uh, as you can see in the figure, uh, this is the flight path that has been sketched by me and Joshua we have decided to fly the aircraft at the part, Dataran, part, Dataran Gawa ETM. So, uh, as you can see that this is all the waypoint that has been set by me and Joshua. Uh, we have designed this waypoint uh, according to the criteria that should be. This is the criteria that should be test. First one is the ability to the ability of the aircraft to perform the straight flight level at zero deflection angle which is we need to fly without any changes on the control surface uh, such as uh, aileron, elevator and rudder. The second criteria is the what is the throttle percentage of the aircraft during the straight flight level uh, which is uh, we need to know or we need to determine what is the safe total percentage for the aircraft to fly straight? Uh, basically, in the simulator practice, simulator practice, we have set the total percentage during a flight level around 45% to 50%. So, in a real cases, uh, we need to find uh, by proceed the flight testing. And the next one is we need to know what is the performance of the center of the gravity, including the agility, the agility, uh, maneuverability, and etc. The next criteria is the ability of the aircraft to perform the gliding flight and the turning flight. And the last criteria is the effectiveness of the control surface and magnitude of response, which is we need we need to know either our aircraft are able to overcome any accident happen during a uh, flight. Alright, that's all about a flight testing. Now we go to a flying procedure. Uh, as we concern about, uh, safety, about our safety and our aircraft safety during proceed the flight test, uh, we need to have a standard operating procedure. Uh, so, me and others in our group has discussed what is the SOP needed before flying the aircraft. Uh, Alright, this is all the procedure that we need to check before we fly. Uh, first one, uh, we need to check all the control surfaces such as uh, aileron, rudder, elevator to make sure there is no problem on the control surface for the aircraft to fly. 
uh, this is important because we don't know uh, what's going to happen we, when we fly the aircraft. So if anything happen, we can overcome the problem or the accident uh, effectively. And the second one, we need to check the propulsion system like a motor and a battery uh, and make sure it can functionally, functionally well and we produce enough thrust for the aircraft to fly so we can avoid any accident like uh, stall or the aircraft crash uh, during we fly the aircraft. So these two things are very important to check before the, before the aircraft to fly. And after we check, all these two things we can see the aircraft to the runway and the aircraft are ready for takeoff so uh, i can say that the procedure are very important things that we need to draft or we need to set first before we fly the aircraft because we can avoid any anything that happen uh, during we fly the aircraft all right so i think that's all from me thank you thank you Okay, uh, what uh, from my point of view about our group project is uh, this is opportunity uh, or exposure for me on the RC aircraft and at the same time doing the analysis. For me, this experience will be useful uh, and helpful for me in the future. Thank you. And so now the challenges in wing loading. The first challenge that I find in this wing loading is that this is a method which is used the approximation method. Since this is just only approximation, it is not it is not something it is real. Hence the calculation or the graph might be a little bit off. Hence the this will produce the inaccuracy of the wing loading that actually loads our wing. And the second and the second challenges that we find in this wing loading is this is a method that calculates on the perfect condition and as we know when we are going to fly an aircraft we don't know what the condition will be it might be windy it might be uh, turbulence condition so basically at this condition it produces a bit of different loading that acts on the aircraft so that is the challenges that we find for the wing loading so as for now i would like to say thank you and i will pass it to the next group or the next team which is the tail and the fuselage team okay in doing anything of course we always encounter challenge so do our team here during completing this project okay the first one that we encounter is we quite inexperienced uh, in buying things that we need in order to fabricate the rc aircraft rc for example, uh, in the beginning, uh, we go around JB to shop for the materials and uh, electronic component. Uh, but we still did not meet the solution for some electronics component which did not have supply in JB. However, uh, in order to solve this uh, problem, we using online shopping platforms such as uh, Lazada, Shopee, Carousel in order to buy this thing. Even it may arrive a bit late for around maybe two weeks for overseas. Uh, it is better than nothing, right? Okay, the next challenge is during this COVID-19 pandemic and MCO, it is impossible for us to do a physical meeting to discuss uh, the matter about this uh, project. However, we, dis we decide to discuss in online platforms such as Webex, Zoom or Skype and even we can discuss it in WhatsApp group. The last challenge uh, is also due to this pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 and MCO which in the beginning Dr. Nazri and Dr. Wan want us to fabricate uh, the RC aircraft however as we cannot do a mass gathering and uh, everyone is at their own home it is, uh, cannot be done however we change the analysis uh, to CFT and static analysis using the simulation so that's how we solve the problem that's all thank you among challenges that I personally see uh, from this project for our group one is that most of us lack the experience in building RC plane which make it hard for some of us to understand of what everything is before being able to witness the operation of RC plane itself. Plus, among possible mistakes that 
could be made throughout this project is the miscalculation of theoretical values which lead to wrong part purchasing. Uh, this will not only cause waste wastage but it will affect the aircraft performance. However, out of 12 uh, members, 4 of us are well versed in this project, the RC plane activities, which includes the building process. So, with these minds and also a new interest that we gain from this project, we are quite confident that our aircraft will fulfill the requirement needed by this course and it will fly very well. To conclude, we have successfully applied our aeronautic knowledge onto this project. We have grown and learned a lot from this course. We definitely enjoy the process of it. On that note, that is all from Group 1. Don't forget to comment, subscribe and like the video. Thank you.